Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the nice short video of the week where we look at what happened in game week 10 and what my plans are for game week 11. And we start by looking at who's doing well in the Midnight Mule mini league. So top scorer for game week 10 was David Roycroft with Schnoozer FC who managed 95 points. That was with Captain Salah on 16, Haaland on 16, Embremo 13, Diaby 13, Sun 10, Madison 6, Simicast 6, Cash 5, Shah 5. And on the bench was Flecken with 6. They're the only points on the bench, but most managers would have played Ariola over Flecken. So I think that was understandable. Current leader of our league is Daniel Chesters with Sack of Potatoes, currently with 714 points in total. That was Sun and Darwin both got 10, Salah got 8, Douglas Louis 7, Madison 6. And you'll notice the captain's not even on the field because it was Odegaard. And so Watkins came in, who got two points as vice, doubled to four. And on the bench, no points. But the bench boost was played, and that was quite unfortunate because Gabriel and Odegaard didn't play, but Arsenal won 5 0. So Gabriel could have got the clean sheet, Odegaard could have got some assists, maybe a goal or two. Vicario, the Tottenham keeper, had a clean sheet up to the 94th minute. So although the bench boost was only worth five points, it, on the other hand, wasn't far off being worth 16 points or more. So that was just unfortunate. So sympathy for anyone who played the bench boost this week and did bad. Talking of which, I managed to get a red arrow with 76 points. So 76 points, you'd have thought that should be a green arrow this week. But because I decided to pay my bench boost... I made transfers, which was a big mistake. So I took out Neto, who was injured. Uh, thanks, Oscar, <laughs> from um, Focal FPL for telling me about that. So that cost me four points to bring in Johnstone. But that's not awful, because over the next few weeks, Johnstone might be all right. That's the Palace keeper. But I took out Diaby and Hoyland, because I wanted Saka in particular. And then Pedro just let me afford it. And then Diaby got 13. Now, I figured in two or three weeks' time I'd get rid of Diaby anyway. But if I didn't get rid of him for Saka, I would have got rid of Sun for Saka. So, anyway, in total, that cost me 15 points. So, it wasn't a good move after all. So, had I done none of these moves and bench boost, I would have got more points. <laughs> so, this is my team. This is what I did. Salah, 16. He was captain. Darwin and Sun both got 10. White, 6. Madison, 6. And Saka got 6. Cash, 5. But I bench boosted. Simicast got six, and the other three got one, two, one. So it wasn't a good bench boost. However, at least I got the bench boost out of the way. So what's going to happen? Most managers were bench boost game week 33, 35, 36, somewhere around there. But the game week before and maybe the game week after, their bench isn't going to be ideal and they're going to probably have money on the bench. Whereas at least I'll have a cheap bench. And this is me post-rationalising, <laughs> trying to justify playing the bench boost already. But we'll see how it goes. It also means, of course, most people who bench boost later in the season, the bench could easily be worth, say, 20 points. So whatever my current rank is, it's always 20 points higher than it should be. So I'm going to take a big drop later in the season. But let's see how that goes. So 76 points in total. Game week rank of 2.3 million odd. So a red arrow, but my rank is actually very close to last week. It's only a thousand different, 1,700 roughly different. But it's still a red arrow, still counts as mm, not a great week. So I'm now nine points behind the one million mark. I'm 154 points behind the overall leader. Now, if this was game week 37 going into 38 and I was six points behind, I'd be feeling pretty good. And I'd think, yeah, I can make up six points. And if I can make up six points every week for the next 28 weeks, then... I'll win it. So, so there we go. So it seems like a lot, but if you divide by 28 weeks, it's not actually quite so bad. 923 of you have subscribed to the channel. Thank you very much to everyone who has subscribed and leaves comments and likes, etc. And most importantly, thank you everyone who watches these videos. So the FPL Game Week website, you can go there, look at content creators and see where you'd feature. Top content creator is currently FPL Fran with 681 points. Somebody else I sometimes see, albeit because of ads, I like watching ads, is Mark Southerns, FPL Black Box. 
and he's got number of the beast for his current score. And in the Midnight Mule Mini League, there are currently, I think, nine or seven, seven or nine managers that have got a higher score than FPL Fran. So that puts it in perspective a bit. They could all be content creators. As for me, I'm down in 46th with 611, which is the same score as Big Man Bacar. Some of you might recognise him. Now, my transfer options, bit of a pickle for me. I'm almost certainly, unless there are certain events dictate otherwise, going to just roll and do nothing this week. Just take it easy. The reason for that is, of my 15 players, I'd be happy for any 11 of the 15 to play. This would be a good week for me to bench boost, actually, but I haven't got it anymore. Now, I'm really quite unsure about which 11 of my 15 to play this week. I would quite like to bench boost, but I can't. So I have Salah as captain. That's Liverpool. He wears the old mule hat and he's got his two mates, Simicat and Darwin, playing as well. And then Watkins is vice captain. He's the only Aston Villa player in the starting 11 as things stand. Then I've got Pedro Porro, Madison and Son from Tottenham. They're all at home to Chelsea. And then Trippier's at home against Arsenal. And I have White and Saka from Arsenal away to Newcastle. And I've got Johnston from Palace in goal. Now, any of these players conceivably could get six points or more. And nobody would be surprised at that particularly. At least I wouldn't be surprised. And on my bench, Ariola away to Brentford. That's probably the most likely to uh, not score any points this week, I think, or be low scoring. But then Mitama and Jao Pedro are away to Everton. And I've got Cash away to Forest. So any of those three, Mitama, Cash or Jao Pedro, would be fine to play. Just that, who would I swap them for? So although a lot of managers don't have White, though he's not massively highly owned like Saka, a lot of managers do have White or Gabriel or Saliba. And a lot of those managers are going to have to play him. And if they play them and they get a clean sheet and whites on my bench, that's going to cost me six points. But I also have to think who's more likely to score. And every week, Mitama does some amazing attacking potential. He could easily get a lot of points in Everton. Unless, of course, I play him. Then he'll probably get two points. So it's really difficult for me. There's a reasonable chance this is going to change a bit. I think I'm definitely going to be playing Madison and Son and Saka and Salah and Watkins and Darwin. It's just the back four could potentially change. But feel free to let me know in the comments what you think I should do. Last week, plenty of people were advising me not to bench boost, but I did anyway. So the chances are I'm going to do my own thing, which is okay because it's all about having fun. And the bench boost was fun. As for the background picture, this is the last one of these videos before... Um, Guy Fawkes or Bonfire Night or the 5th of November as we call it here and for those who may not know and of course that's Guy Fawkes from Via's Vendetta a film I finally got around to watching a couple of years ago but Guy Fawkes was Catholic and he was backed by some English Catholics but not the official Catholic Church in the continent in Europe and he tried to blow up the Protestant Parliament because of the Protestant King so it was very much a religious thing but nowadays with Bonfire Nights Catholics and Protestants and atheists and people from all backgrounds just have a nice time watching the fireworks go up because they look nice. But anyway, that's why I've done this as the background. There we go. I, <laughs> I hope that was a little bit interesting. And if you've not played your bench boost yet, well done. You did better than me and Daniel Chester. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope you have a good game week 10. Bye. <laughs>